Okay, so now that we have an overview of what envelopes are and how the different parameters work within the envelopes, let's talk now about some different applications for these envelopes. So we mentioned last time that the overall amplitude of the patch is modulated by envelope 4, and you can see that here, uh, the number 4. And so our number 4 envelope here um, will control the response of the overall amplitude. And as its, as its default sounds like this, um, we are set on gate, uh, which means that if I let go at a certain portion in the sustain stage, it will jump right to the release stage. We have a, a small attack, a small release, um, our sustain level over here is lower than our attack level, so it drops down a little bit, and we have a pretty long decay. Uh, that that time takes takes a little while. Uh, if you want to create lead sounds, I usually recommend shortening the attack, short shortening that release, and then increasing that sustain level. So you just have this nice tabletop here. And you can, s you can just hear how uh, straight ahead that sounds. If my sustain level is down, you're going to get a much different sound. Right? So that's one way that you can use your envelope to your advantage. Um, um, when, uh, when, you're, you know, when you're building your sounds. If you don't want to control the overall amplitude and you want to just control another parameter, you can do that as well. So um, I'm going to open a new sound. And um, just in order to illustrate this, I'm going to drop envelope 1 into the amplitude of oscillator 1. Uh, let's deactivate oscillators 2 and 3. And don't worry too much about this modulation handle business, because we'll get more into that later. But basically, I'm going to use envelope 1 to modulate this knob the amplitude knob, or the volume knob, of oscillator 1. So um, I, I've dropped it in here, and I've created a modulation depth or range over the entire course of this amplitude knob. That means that in my envelope here, this graphical display is showing me what this knob is doing over time. So when I strike a key, we have a little bit of a ramp, and a long delay, d long decay, and um, and our sustain level is lower than our attack level, and then there's a little bit of a release. But let's shape this up a little bit to get a different sound out of this oscillator. So what it sounds like now is this. All right, so let's play with this a little bit to have some fun. I'm going to move this all the way over to the sawtooth wave because it's a little bit more pleasing to my ear at the moment. And I'm going to increase the attack time, reduce the sustain level, and maybe increase my decay time a little bit. I want a little, uh, a little, a little wob here. And I can choose one shot uh, to control um, the response to the key, meaning uh, I can play it and I don't have to hold it down to let it go over the entire course of the envelope. That's kind of cool for some bass sounds. You can drop this down two octaves. If I want something pluckier, I can reduce the attack time so that when I strike the key, it occurs immediately, and then it drops out of, uh, drops out of, and then the amplitude drops down. Okay, so that's something you can do. You can use it to control the amplitude of 
of an oscillator. I'm going to take this out. Turn my amplitude back up. Now let's say we want to um, make a bass sound and use an envelope to control a filter. So here's just a, a, an octave lower, like this, and I'm going to set up a low pass filter. So since my cutoff frequency is all the way down at the bottom, you're going to barely hear the sound at all when I send it to filter 1. Create a mix of just filter 1. You can barely hear anything at all because the cutoff frequency is down so low. When I raise this up, you can hear it sound uh, a little bit brighter. So that's pretty cool. So if I just take the same envelope that we are working with and drop it into this cutoff knob and create a modulation range like this, then I will get a nice pluck at the top of this cutoff frequency knob and it'll swell down. What, let's say I want to do the opposite. I have two options. I can, um, I can invert the polarity of this modulation range by moving my cutoff um, frequency knob all the way up and then dropping the modulation range down the, in the opposite direction. Then if you think about it this way, this envelope is basically upside down, where it's starting off here at a low frequency and it plucks in and then sort of swells down over the course of this decay to the top of the cutoff frequency. So it starts off dull and then peaks um, down here at the bottom. And I can increase the tack time, and it'll sound a little bit more like this. I can choose uh, the linear button and make my decay uh, my, my decay time, a, in a, I can change it to a linear slope like this so that I just have a nice triangle here. So that's pretty fun. I like that. But let's take this off and see what else we can do. Let's say I want to assign a modulation oscillator to uh, to my oscillator number one. So I'll put the phase uh, modulation oscillator here, and I'll increase the pitch of this to get a little bit more um, activity. So that's what this knob is controlling here, sort of that AM sound. And I'm going to choose a new envelope, and let's, do, uh, let's play around with the loop function a little bit. I'm just going to set the loop to 4. Well, let's just set it to 8 so we can hear a little bit better. And uh, I'll drop this envelope in here like this and create a modulation range across the entire course of the knob. You can hear, you maybe heard it, um, move in between these two uh, loops back and forth eight times and then it just stayed at that end at that end point until I released the key. But let's try some uh, m a few more extreme um, um, slopes here with our loop. That's kind of a cool peak there. And then on the way back, let's try uh, extreme no. Let's try something like that.
So you can hear some of the movement there, and that's a really cool way to add some depth to, the, depth to your sounds, is by applying um, the, an envelope. Rather than applying it to just the, the overall amplitude, I'm applying it to the modulation oscillator and creating a little bit of movement in the phase knob like that. You can do similar things even to the effects. So let's choose a new envelope, envelope number three. And let's do this backwards here. Uh, I'm going to uh, reduce the attack level all the way down to nothing. Reduce that attack time. And the sustain level, I will turn all the way up because I want this nice logarithmic curve up like this. And I'm probably going to, well, let's leave the decay about right there for now. And let's turn up the release. So what would happen, do you think, if I assign this to, uh, let's say, a reverb effect? So I will drop this envelope into my dry-wet knob and um, increase this modulation depth like this. So now what's going to happen is um, my sound will start off dry, will swell into some wetness. Then when I release the key, it will drop back down to dry over the course of this release stage. Just like that. That's pretty cool. And um, if I increase this decay time, it will be a slower ramp up to that wetness. And we can change this effect to maybe uh, ensemble chorus. That's pretty cool. So something like that that you can you can play around with. That way you're not just using a static um, effect. You're having it swell in. So you have a nice dry attack, but then the chorus swells in because I've told it to do so based on the shape of the envelope that I've created. And so lastly, I'll just show you one fun thing that I sort of like to do, playing with the delay knob. So I can set up three different oscillators here. And um, we'll have this one at negative 12, like it is now. This one will be a, sure, square wave. And we'll have it set up at 0. Oscillator 3 will have set up at 7 uh, semitones. So that's a nice fifth. And so all together, let's just put all these to filter 1, turn off our filters. And um, if they're played all together, it will sound like a chord. Turn off that chorus. So that's kind of cool. But what if we could delay the response of each of these oscillators using envelopes? Well, we can do so. So I'm going to um, turn all these amplitudes down and then put envelope 1 here, envelope 2 here, and envelope 3 here. And uh, let's create the modulation range like this. So let's set up envelope 1. Uh, we're going to have the attack all the way down, the level all the way down, um, and then this sustain level will turn up, turn off linear, so we have this uh, logarithmic curve here and we'll turn down the release. So that's what, uh, so oscillator one soloed will sound like this. And we'll change it to gate as well. Okay. And now I'm going to copy this, paste it into envelope number two, like that, and also into envelope number three. So I've my three envelopes are exactly the same now, but I'm going to use this delay knob to uh, give some space in between the two envelopes. So the first envelope will have no delay, the second envelope will have a little bit, and the third will have a little bit more, like that. So that means... Um, oscillator 1 will swell in, then 2, and then 3 in succession when we, act when we activate them. That's 
kind of cool. And we can increase this delay time to make it an even more extreme um, cascading effect. If we turn all these to sawtooth waves, add that chorus back in, and uh, let's remove this modulation, and, uh, and then we'll talk more about this later, but we'll put in a little bit of detune here with the pitch cutoff and get a nice little pad sound here. So you can hear those uh, the you know the first oscillator swells, the second comes after it and the third comes after that. So that'll just show you um, some of the some of the options that you have uh, using and applying envelopes to some of these different parameters. You can have a lot of fun with them, and uh, it's really crucial to shaping how your sound comes out. Okay, so uh, play with some of those options, and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture. <laughs>